Okay, so welcome. Uh, I think you can take it from here direct. Um, I did one small change to the agenda from earlier meeting, and that's actually I post pasted the action item. I think I think we need to uh, address at this meeting uh, into the agenda. If there are more action items, then we, yeah, yes, bring them up. But uh, it's a kind of my opinion on what we need to say something about. Yeah, this is okay. Okay, so I have uh, on the, the three action items on the first uh, bullet on the agenda. So uh, the first one, we are asking for a uh, consensus on the direct directives that we came up with. Um, I'm flipping to the, you know, to the page where we have the directives uh, uh, that we reviewed last time. Um, I formulated an email uh, and basically, you you know, this is my proposal: is we send an email to the to the three working groups, or maybe uh, yeah, I think uh, these are the groups that I thought of. But let me know if uh, I'm missing any. Uh, um, you and have... basically ask. Uh, so Tarek, uh, on the action item, there is uh, T's also in line uh, as one of the groups. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm hmm. a kind of a little bit ambivalent. Uh, I think it was, would be good to have T's uh, joining in if they want to, uh, but we need to check that. Um, yeah, we were uh, we were debating last time is if uh, T's wants to, to engage in this or not. I don't I don't mind adding T's in in the list. Uh, I, I think you I think you should send a mail to uh, the T's chair and ask them if they are okay with sending out this mail. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, so the the proposal is to send this email to the working groups and ask them for uh, reviewing the text and sounding any concerns and feedback. Um, the text is basically, you know, mostly um, taken from here, but so I, I did, uh, you know, I, I think I did just edits, um, but I did also, instead of uh, cannot here, I put must, must not. Uh, so I want your, uh, your feedback on that as well. It's more... Uh, you know, terminology of IETF. Is that what we're signing on as a must not? Uh, Don't we have cannot in the list? Do we have still cannot? Do you see it? No, no. Uh, I was asked about uh, in the um, um, requirement language. Don't we have cannot? In the uh, uh, in all cap, uh, Tarek. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. So, um, uh, on this line, so that must not be followed by more than one set of post tag data. Um, do we have a definition of what is the set? Of post tag data. Uh, that's a good question. There, there is a uh, uh, there is an elaboration here. That is the FAI style PSD. This is one post tag data. Um, the that net control word and ash. I think the ash is another type, or any other future PSD. Yeah. So. The, how about you read this and let me know, does it address your concern? Um, okay. My question is, so, um, do we, are we making this list ex, um, exhaustive or these are examples? Because if it's exhaustive, then we will need to do um, 
control word or pseudo y control word and then uh, that net ACH to add to the list. I, I think, yeah, I, I agree. We did not formally define post stack data in this text. Uh, probably we have it somewhere else, but uh, if you want uh, it to be, uh, you know, uh, generic to capture everything, we may want to, rather than jot examples here, um, so say I exactly. Think, sorry, Tarek. I think we should take a guilty until proven innocent. And any legacy post-stack data wants to say, I can work with this, should prove that they can work with this. There's a way to be interoperable and backward Otherwise, we have to say, no, you can't join the new thing. So essentially, if you say uh, the death end um, forward is okay, then there has to be a document that says this is how the dead net control word will work with uh, the new post stack data. The, the, the draft that I'm writing uh, for the personable registry generally takes the, the direction that when you have the new first nibble directory, uh, the, the registry, zero, 00 has some meaning, zero, 01 has some meaning, um, 5 has some meaning. 0406 are set aside for IP before IPv6. But we still have several, and we don't need too many because we just want the one header that says, this is the new style post stack data. And so if the first label after the label stack is, let's pick a number, seven, then seven says, I'm a header for post stack data in the MIAD world of things. And after this, here is how we lay out things. You might choose TLBs, you might choose next header, you might choose some other mechanism. And that's how that would work. So then you have a choice between any of the existing ones or the uh, new post stack data, in which case the first symbol is seven, and then you know we define what the structure is. Then you can pull in in a backward compatible in the backward. You can pull in functionality from, say, the .NET control board, saying this is how the .NET control board can fit into this whole schema. So you say uh, first number is seven, and then maybe you have a length field, and then you say here's how .NET fits in, here's how the new things that we want fit in, here's how generic delivery functions fit in, and then we build that. So you can use .NET in the new world, or you can use .NET in the old world, but you can't use both because there, is, there are no two first nibbles. There's only one first nibble. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes I, sense, Kiridi. It's just mm -hmm. how to word it in the yeah, one exactly. sentence. I, I think we have more than one, one issue here. Uh, so I think we should be generic about uh, post-act data that can't coexist. Uh, and that's the legacy and the, the file style. Uh, they can't coexist. Yes, uh, exactly. File style PSD can exist because that is how we will make it. The yeah, other question yeah. is, should there be a must not, or should it be l lower cap? Then low, low, what? Lower oh, okay. Five style can coexist with what, uh, Loa? When you said it can coexist. I, I, say, coexist. I say that the, the legacy uh, uh, that goes into the, the, the first uh, four bytes after the boss, or even longer if they are, they can't coexist with each other and with the file style. So I think, I think it would be simpler to just say, we now have a first stack, a first nibble registry. So whether you have a file style um, 
label in the stack or whether it is, you know, there is no uh, you know, FAI label at the stack. When you parse it, um, at some point you say, uh, Kiriti, you, know, first, of all, first of all, you're very hard to hear. Okay, I'm, I'm in the car, so it's a bit difficult, but. Okay. In five. Um, let, me, let me try to switch away from three. Hello? Yeah, better. Yeah. Is this Much better? better. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So, so if you have an, I know we were trying to craft all this about coexistence and non-coexistence. Essentially, what we have is a label stack followed by a first nibble. And the first nibble says what is going on after the label stack. So if you say that first nibble, we have a registry, we have a way of dealing with this, um, there can only be one, one first nibble, and that first nibble says what's coming next. So if that first nibble is zero, zero, then it's either a pseudo wire control word or a death net control word. And we know how that works, and we don't change that. If, if the first nibble is zero, one, there's some definite, I think it's a death net, um, some, well, whatever, the, the, there's some data. If it's 04 or 06, you're expecting an IPv4 or IPv6 packet. But, Kirit, are you, are you talking about the next action item now, or are you talking about getting consensus on uh, the uh, statement we agreed on last time? So, the getting consensus on the statement we agreed last time the way we were phrasing it, I think that the cleaner way of phrasing it, now that we have this first nibble registry. So, so okay, to your point, I'm proposing a new statement um, for, for this. Uh, is that really necessary? Doesn't this cover actually what we need? So what we're doing now is sort of taking case by case, this can go with this, this cannot go with this, and okay, let me let me tell you what the proposal is, and then you decide which way you want to go. If I take, um, if I if I if I assume the existence of a first nibble registry, the first nibble registry will tell you what the post stack data is. So I parse the label stack. I'm at end of the label stack. I look at the first nibble. If it is a zero. It is either the dead net control word or a pseudo wire oh, control minute, Carita, word. You need to pick up a hint from something else in the um, in the stack before you're allowed to pass that nibble. You can't just pass the nibble on its own. Okay. Because um, it could be a legacy pseudo wire that doesn't respect the first nibble. Actually, and uh, what what's the number forty nine twenty nine? The load sharing one. It actually mm -hmm. says. That if you are an application that don't want load sharing, you can use uh, zero zero or zero one as the first nibble. But the point is, there are packets in the wild that don't respect any of these rules. So uh, before you're allowed to look at that nibble, you must confirm from from the stack that you're allowed to make a decision on that nibble. I, I, I agree. I, I also have a, a concern about post stack data. Does it encompass user data? Like gen generic user data? I mean, it it does, unfortunately, because um, when the, when, I mean, not the post stack data, the first nibble does. So no, when no, the first I mean, nibble is user data, user data only. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when the first but, nibble, so if you're doing IPVPN, mm -hmm. It, there is no post stack data at, uh, at all, um, uh, typically. So but you the, have uh, the first nibble is four. So if you're looking at the first nibble, uh, if you see four, it could be a number of things, but you probably assume that it's uh, user data. You cannot make that assumption, though, Creed, can you? <laughs> you it, can't, could be a, it could be an Ethernet packet. You can't, well, you, 
So, so we have problems that, you know, as you said, there are in the wild things that are doing that. There's not so, much we can do about that. Well, what we no, can no, say, no. okay. What we can do is we can require the, something in the label stack, either an SPL or a FEC, to tell us that it is safe to look at the first nibble and make any forwarding decision based on it. Well, I mean, we, if you're going down that path, we could say that um, if the first nibble, if the payload is Ethernet, you must put a, a control word. Now, there'll be legacy applications that don't um, respect that, but there'll be legacy applications that don't respect what you just said either. So we have to understand that there will be some packets. No, no, wait I a mean, moment. I mean, you just said you just said there will be a label in the label stack, uh, a special yes. purpose label or something. But there are things in the wild that say there's no such label. There's a pseudo wire control, I mean, pseudo wire mm -hmm. label. So, so those things know what they're doing, right? Those things just think the world is like the world was when they were designed. But the yes. new things um, are going to make decisions based on uh, this, bot, the, the, this first nibble. And before they can make that decision, they need a qualifying decision somewhere in the stack. And they and those applications not necessarily in the stack. Thing. Well, it can be it, 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 when I say in the stack, it's either got to be, I think. Uh, through a FEC or a or a, some form of SPL. It could be the first nibble. It can't be because the first nibble could, no. uh, um, could no, be an because, Ethernet packet. No, no, I'm saying that the first nibble. So if you're mandating new behavior, you say that every non IPv4, non IPv6 packet must have a post stack data. Now, if you whether this post stack data is heralded by the control plane or it's heralded by a special purpose label, you know that's something that we need to decide. But you cannot have if you, if you mandate that every non IPv4 IPv6 packet has the post stack data, you cannot have a first nibble being Z, uh, four unless it's IPv4. So that requires a complete forklift on the on the network before you can install this feature. It, it, it only requires that for for a new implementation. I am not saying we can fix the problem where you have an existing pseudo wire without a control word. It happens to start with an OUI whose first nibble is four. That's that's reality, and we have to live or, with that. Or, or, or seven, or it could be anything. It can be any. It can be any, yeah. any naught to sixteen, and naught to fifteen rather. So the question, Kuriti, in other words, uh, can user data uh, uh, exist um, after the MPLS label stack, bottom of stack, and start with anything not zero? Anything user. not? Zero. Yeah, are you mandating zero there? I, mean, I don't think. It's all I'm mandating. I'm not mandating zero. I'm mandating non four, non six, unless it's an IP packet. Okay. And right, and, and that means we have to guarantee that we've upgraded the entire network before it is safe to run this feature. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm just saying that new new behavior. We 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 mandate that new implementations do this. If existing implementations do this. They will work as they worked before, including as badly as they worked before, trying to load balance an Ethernet packet, thinking it was IPv4. Until those but, implementations are out, there's nothing we can do about them. No, uh, the, the, I, thing, the thing is, if you've got a, if you've got, think about a practical situation where you've got, say, a, a, a P router somewhere in in a provider's domain. Your and, and this P router respects the first four bits below the stack that yeah. requires that every every pe somewhere upstream in some other provider's network feeding traffic that's going to go through that lsp at some point is also upgraded otherwise i, that, that's I don't fact, see why no but i don't see why it requires that because, because because there could be one that isn't inserting a control word and it's just going to 
as an example, and it's just going and it's still going to be groomed on uh, groomed through the network onto that LSP down in some domain downstream, and then be misinterpreted Indeed. by by this this um, NSR that is assuming that everything is compliant. So you but, always need some other context information. Uh, so so okay, I, I guess one one key thing is the new behavior that we 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 mandate or we suggest, um, we can choose the words. The new behavior essentially says, for you to be compliant, for the new device to be compliant, these are your rules. And if you do this, you're not going to miss load balance and IPv4, uh, sorry, and ethernet packet thinking it's IPv4. But um, you're not making any assumptions about others. And if they send you uh, packets, uh, you know, and they haven't put the control word. You yourself might might uh, miss, um, you know, miss load balance them. And if you send very good packets to them, uh, at least they won't be able to miss uh, miss load balance them because you put your control word on it. So you can't you can't control other behaviors, but you can control your own. So I, I think that, that for your feature, the way you've described it to be working in the network, Kariti, I think you have to do two things. You have to mandate that every single PE in your network is modified to this new behavior, and every carrier. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Every. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, if you don't mandate the upgrade of all the PEs, one of them could be running the legacy mode. Yes. And that could be sending uh, traffic through that you that spoofs the behaviour you're trying to get in with your um, with your nibble. Well, I mean, but uh, wait, wait you, you're trying to solve a very big problem, and what we addressed with the design directive is kind of a much smaller problem, isn't it? Sorry, it's what? Sorry, yeah. lower. It's it's a much smaller problem. It, it says. Think. It says, we know if we have a data control word, we know if we have an ACH, uh, they can't coexist. Uh, we know if we have a file style PXD, it can't exist with either of those. And that's it. Now, that's one thing, but, but Kariti wants to do more. Kariti wants to make a decision based on the first I, nibble, as I understand it. I, yes. I, under I understand they might do that. But for the time being, we, we are not there yet because there are so many things that need to be checked to do that. But so, what we so, have in, okay. What we have in the proposal. text. So, um, Lord, just give me a second. So, here's my proposal. Um, we can um, write some text about compatibility of you know control word a with uh, the fai style label and control word b and we can write that text that we were writing that you had written and um, we can we can go with that right it's my suspicion that that text will have to get rewritten i and i agree with you kriti as is now the text i'm finding it's hard for the working groups not attending uh, the design call to uh, to parse. Uh, it, it's, but, yeah, but I, I think it's more than parsing. I think it would come to a point where that text will be discarded. But but here's my proposal: we go ahead and try to get that text uh, in a in a form that uh, people understand it and people can can you know to Tarek's point they can parse it. Yeah. To understand what it's intended, and they can go ahead and do. We actually go off and say this is what happens with the first nibble, and then, you know, uh, answer the questions that uh, Stuart uh, is bringing up, and and you know uh, maybe to some extent Matthew as well, and I believe that when that is done, the original text will be superseded but that's okay let's write that original text about what is compatible with what in a way that uh, people can parse it and people in other working groups that are maybe not following every step of the design team understand at least in theory what we're doing and if it gets superseded so be it 
So we don't have to have this particular discussion right now. It is the one I'm trying to have. We write that text. I will go offline, write some different text, and then we'll reconcile the two. Does that make sense? Um, I'm basically saying, uh, Loa, go ahead with what you were doing, and I will come back next week and propose something else, and then we'll we'll see how well they reconcile with each other. Can, why why do you do something if I know that you are going to propose something else? Ah, exactly. I I think there is a uh, the reason we're having the discussion is uh, there was supposed to be an email sent out and the email is coming out from the MPLS open design team and having this text in there. Uh, so I, I, if there will be new text, I think we have to hold off on. Okay. On things. Right. All right. So then the flip the, I mean, to, to Laura's point, if we can hold off for a week on sending out some text, then at the next, uh, uh, you know, next design team meeting, I will present my view of how this should happen. In the process of doing that, I will try to answer Matthew and, and Stuart's questions. And if it all holds up, we'll adopt that text. If it doesn't hold up, we will arrive at a version that does hold up. And if that doesn't work out at all, we'll fall back to Loa's text. Uh, and uh, all right, no, that, that, that sounds like a plan. So we st we, 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 we don't, we can't post this um, email yet. We haven't agreed it, but we have a plan to try and get closer to some text that we can uh, uh, can agree on. So that seems a reasonable way forward. That that is fine. Uh, having that said, I do not agree to the must not. I think that should be lowercase. To where? Uh, oh. In the. Can you go back? To... Yeah, so, there is a must not here. Uh, uh, it's. It's it there, to... and it's also in the uh, bullet before. The original version was cannot. Uh, yeah. And uh, was changed. I changed it to must not. So if we agree, uh, you know, cannot may, might not be understood. What do you mean by cannot? Is it why? Why is that? Is it optional or what? I mean, cannot. What? What? What do you no, mean? No, it cannot. It cannot be there. No, I mean, but it's, uh, it's, it's normal mean, language. It's not requirement language. No, the design I, yeah. is, uh, do you mean the design is unable to support the simultaneous use of more than one set of PSD in a packet? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, it means speaking, it is not allowed to be. Yes, strictly which, speaking, which really should be yeah. must not. No, bottom of the stack cannot be immediately. Uh, just technically, it cannot happen because. If we are talking about immediately followed, then there will be only one thing. One thing. Is, is this a rule or a comment? That thing can be followed by another thing. So the wording is confusing as is. I agree. Is the word a rule or is the sentence a rule or a comment? Uh, Is it an uh, observation? Sure I wrote it, but uh... is it intended to be just an observation or, or, or a or a, um, a comment on preceding text, or is it meant to be a rule in its own right? There is a, uh, a clarification statement after it, Stuart. If that helps. If it's uh, just a clarification statement, then must not is not is is not needed. No, um, no, I, after that. That there is a clarification statement after uh, 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 the, after. So there is a uh, in bold is the statement, and then there is an IE after. So it's uh, clarifying the previous. Well, so I think it's either the design does not support them being there simultaneously, or two types of PSD um, must not um, um, follow the. Um, Yeah, a, a packet must not contain two uh, independent types of PSD. Is that a capital must not in your language? No, well, the, uh, is it a comment on the, well. So I, I'm kind of objecting. Hmm. 
against using the requirement language here. That's what I'm saying. Right. If you use must not, that's fine. Instead of cannot, that's. Oh. Okay, uh, what is what is it you asking the working group to give you feedback on then? I I mean when they see must not, uh, what does how do I interpret it as a implementer? Like I I'm not I'm I get confused. Uh, there are there there's confusing language in there honestly. And I'll tell you that if post tag data, does it mean that user data is there or no? Is in, inside post tag data? Uh, post tag data is there because uh, something in the stack tells you that it's there. If there is nothing that tells you that it's there as post tag data, it's not there. No, no, I mean, when you say post tag data, is it only ASH uh, FAI style PSD or? Post tag data encompasses user data as well, right? Um, Lingu just linguistically, uh, from English language, post stack. Uh, well, data. Th then I'm disqualified. I don't don't understand English really. Oh, oh uh, I see. I mean, well, I'm, well, not, well, I'm not going to claim that I am. I think I think I think what you mean here is that some embodiment of 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 some data that can be used by the network rather than you're not talking about any old data which may or may not be used you mean actually something that we're pointing to so exactly exactly matthew assume i'm not attending the design team every week and i see post doc data do i you know do i assume anything as after the post doc uh, what does it mean? Yeah, I, think, yeah, I think we need to define what we mean here because we're not talking about payload. We're talking about you're not talking about user payload. We're talking about um, some encoding that we can use for doing something in you know that the MPLS network can do something with. Literally, yeah. post stack data means the data that comes after the stack. So yeah, so, so I think PSD is the wrong term here. Um, hold hold on a sec. The, what we do have is the first nibble. And so this is the direction where I'm trying to take the, the first nibble registry is you look at that first nibble. And if that first nibble is four or six, we try to get to a place where it always means that this is an IPv4 or an IPv6 header. If that nibble is not four or six, that means it is a header that you interpret it, and the way you interpret it depends on what that value is. Um, and, and, and then that post act data turns into post act data that we were thinking of. The four and six um, usually would be, this is actually payload, but you can occasionally get confused because it was actually an OUI of an ethernet uh, address, which happened to have a first nibble of four or six. If you ignore that sort of exception, then a, uh, the post stack data, interpreting the post stack data is based on the first nibble. And I, I know what Stuart's objection here would be. What is in the wild is in the wild, and there will be that payload which starts with a four or six, which you might interpret as IPv4. That's that's. You know, that's what's happening, and that's not something you can change. You can't take those implementations, uh, well, until you take those implementations out of the network. But going forward, you are not going to introduce any more ambiguities. Going forward, if it is not an IPv4 or an IPv6 packet, you must put a non-4, non-6 post stack header so that there will not be any confusion. That's pretty well, much there yeah, but I think there's, there there's are other ways of reducing the confusion. That is to say, a new packet must have some other qualifier before it's allowed to. Before you're allowed to look at the four or six. Sorry, Matthew, you you you, you had a point. Yeah, I think, but I think the point of this this restriction here was just to say we don't use, for example, we don't use the gal on the same. There's not a, G, a gal gach construct on the same pack in the same packet. As an FAA style, FAI style SPL. Yeah, so that, that, that's what we're trying to say, right? Not, not, not 
Can you see more than that? Right, exactly. So I, I completely agree with you. And this is why I said, if we write this as we do today, and then we come back in a week or two and, and settle out you know, what the first nibble is about, we can come back and say, by the way, when the label stack ends, the situation we would like to see is, if the first nibble is a four or a six, it's an IPv4 packet all the time with new implementations. I'm not talking about legacy. If the situation is a um, zero, um, it's a, either the detnet control word or a pseudo-wire control word. If, it is the, if the first nibble is a one, it's something. If it is a five, it's beer. And if you want the new FAI style post act data, we pick a number that's not any of those. So we might pick seven, we might pick 13, we might pick three, if, well, I don't know if three has been used. And so the, the, what we're trying to say here gets said immediately because the first nibble is either a zero, which in case, you know, some gal ACH or something, or it's a 13, in which case it's FAI style. So you don't have to say it because it's implicit in the, in the first nibble registry. You go look at the first nibble and say new style, FAI style post act data, or it's an IPv4 packet, or it's uh, so it, it lays out exactly what it is. Yeah, that's that's fine because that, that basically is just, but that's really saying only look at the first nibble beyond the I, on the stack. I, don't don't ever have a situation, for example, where you have, oh, I don't know, two gal, two GACHs below the stack. Yes, yeah. two different kinds. So, so you say, so let's say packing LSPPing and BFD into the same packet somehow, you know, something, something like that. Um, so, what we're saying is that the 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 first post stack post stack word is definitive. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, but it's it's not. It's not. Well, so 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 like I said. That's where I, I'm trying to go. What I'm going to do is write it up, hopefully uh, clarify, um, you know, all of these uh, corner cases that Stuart, Matthew, and you are bringing up. And then we can arm wrestle and say, yeah, this is fairly complete, or wait, there's still some ho more holes, or maybe it's fundamentally flawed and we have to go back to a different way of doing things. But if we can get there where we can just look at the first nibble, um, then, then I think we'll be in a place where we're good. Oh, that's the goal. All uh, right. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think um, uh, I, uh, we, we should never uh, try to use a first label as um, any uh, protocol indicator. Um, if we have a, a our defined definition of the post stack uh, data, we should already have something in the label stack to indicate that. So we know for sure what will follow. We should never rely on, you know, another um, label to indicate that. Um, in history, there, no, there's no any indicator in the label stacks. And that's why in some times we have to uh, try to use that label uh, or um, you know, uh, if it's IPv4 or V6, we don't want to confuse. Um, um, uh, but but uh, um, so, you know, so in, your, in your new design, I don't think we uh, we should uh, continue to follow that um, because uh, now we have a new mechanism in uh, label stack to tell us explicitly what we, what we expect. So I don't think that's a reliable way or our ideal way to do. And uh, um, at, at, at most, uh, we we just uh, we should ignore that uh, that label uh, you know, in our new design, but we shouldn't rely on that. So I disagree with you. And uh, from what I see, we are making more use of the nibble. I want to take the, I want to use that nibble to its logical end. And by the way, it's you not. Know, it, 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 can I finish? Yeah. It's not a protocol indicator. What it is, is a dual purpose thing. For the specific values of four and six, it indicates not with full certainty, but with high probability, the packet you're dealing with is an IPv4 or an IPv6 packet. For every other value, it indicates 
this is what the header is, not the packet. This is what the header is. And this is how you interpret the contents of the header. And after that, what you do with the packet, you need to figure out some other way. Yeah, you, you just Post said that, even, even its value four and a six is a not a reliable way to tell what it actually is. So you should never rely on, on that. That will, if, if we do that, that will make a mistake. There is or, no, or make or any yeah. indicator in the label stack redundant. You know, there, so there if is, we have something in the label stack, why do we need to use this? We don't have something in the label stack for legacy applications anyway. So I, I don't know where this magic comes from. Whether it's in the first nibble or in the label stack, the, the original router that created this packet has had to behave in a certain way. If everyone behaved perfectly, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The problem is, a lot of this was done by accretion, done by, hey, I could do this, there were a few heuristics thrown in. We have to deal with those routers. But what we can do is say, going forward, we will have fewer of those problems. And eventually when those routers that uh, don't conform go away from the network, we have a situation where everyone understands everything perfectly. I think if we, if we do have a, our new um, indicator and the new post uh, stack data in the package. The, the legacy router cannot handle that anyway. So we, we don't expect we can still run this in the old routers. We have to update those, uh, you know, all, all the, you know, at least the, all the edge, um, all the edge routers to support this, to support the, our new uh, package format, right? I, uh, sorry. So I, I don't think we have to. I think we have to learn how to live with legacy. Do no worse. And even even you honor those four nibble, you can still not achieve your goal to make it work in the old router, because you have something, you know, that's no cannot be recognized by the old router at all. If you have some indicator uh, in the label stack. So if if you let me finish, I'll tell you what I'm trying to get to. I'm not trying to get the old routers to understand the new stuff. That's not going to happen. What I'm trying to get to is the the old router's behavior doesn't have to be changed. We don't have to update all the old routers. The behavior that they have is flawed. It'll be probably flawed in the new style as well, but hopefully less so, uh, less often. But um, I, I think we have to be very clear what you can do in the network while the legacy routers are still around. <clears throat> uh, Kiriti and Huayu and team, uh, I did capture that we, uh, the, the team is agreeing that the design directive text will need to be revised. Uh, Kiriti, you're volunteering to propose some new revised text yeah. and uh, the team will review that. Uh, for the email, we're holding off from sending it for now until we review the, the new text or, or fall back on the on the old text. Uh, well, you can, can we, uh, I, we have other items on the agenda and I, I do want to, uh, you know, give a chance for the other items to, uh, to be visited at least to be visited. Um, so I'll give you a chance to say the last words, uh, Kiriti and Huayu. I have nothing more to say. I, I mean, I'll produce the text and I, I think one thing I will say is that it might be helpful if someone thinks that they can take the current text because of these discussions about cannot and must not and are you being prescriptive or are you being descriptive? The current text, um, moving it forward a little bit, uh, it might be work that's throw away, but I think it's useful as a backup plan. Um, so if someone wants to do that, they can do that. But on my thing, I will produce text and then we'll have something solid we can uh, argue over next time. Thank you. Why you, do you want to go next? Uh, uh, no, the, yeah, let, let's see what uh, pretty will propose and then we'll start from there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Loa, I'll give you a chance to uh, disagree or agree yeah. on the resolution. I think we are confusing things, but uh, yeah, let's try to solve it next time. All right. Uh, 
I'll go back to the agenda then. Um, uh, the next action item was uh, the first nibble registry. Coincidentally, this is what we're talking about. Uh, do you want to talk about the uh, draft update, Kriti, besides the discussion we had? Uh, anything you want to add, uh, Kriti? Yeah. That, right? I, I can give a quick overview if you, if you have time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's on the agenda, so. Yeah, yeah. So the draft, the general idea of the draft was to say, um, how do people use the first nibble today? Uh, so essentially they look for the four and the six and if they see a four or six, they say, oh, I think it's an IPv4 packet or IPv6 packet. They find appropriate fields and do load balancing. Um, and, uh, you know, or they find uh, it's not four or six, and then they say it's not an IPv4 packet. And then uh, it's kind of, oh, if there's a zero, then maybe it's a pseudo wide control word. <clears throat> and, you know, all of those things are a little bit subject to problems because an Ethernet, a bare Ethernet packet that comes right after the label stack could confuse things. So the first nibble registry has uh, sort of three purposes. One is to say, why did we do this? What do, what do we do? How are we doing it? What are the heuristics that are applied? What are the issues with that? The second is to say, uh, we mandate that there should be a post stack header, uh, which means a nibble value of not four or not six for any case where that uh, payload is not IPv4 or IPv6. You could go further and say, I don't care. There's always going to be a post stack header. And then uh, you, you know, you pass the post stack header, you know, control word, you know, whatever else you need to do. And then uh, when the post stack header is over, then you say, okay, now my real payload starts. And at this point, I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to mess with things there. So, to go back, um, I want to you know to write down what it is that we do today and why and some of the rationale. What is it that we should be doing? And in order to uh, you know make everything easier to do, to have a re registry that requires a uh, standard stack RFC to put so to gather the existing values that are allowed for the first nibble and then uh, create a registry that says, if you want to create new entries, it must be a standard track process, standard action process. Kiriti, is there a new draft already? There is not a posted draft. There is a draft that we're circulating uh, that I was supposed to put on GitHub. Um, I haven't done that yet. I will try to see if I can do it um, today. If not, I will ask you for help on you know adding uh, things to the GitHub repo, yeah. and and so, uh, you know, it will be sort of a public draft that people can see, you know, if they go to the GitHub repo. But over the course of the next um, couple of weeks, I want to get it out as an actual draft so that this can be officially discussed in IETF 112. Thank you. Yeah, uh, is there an ask from the design team uh, after you post the GitHub? Uh, the, the draft on Git. Do you want uh, the design team to review it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So before next Thursday, I will put up um, this on GitHub and send a pointer. Ho hopefully, bef well before next Thursday, so people can see it, because you know, showing it, displaying it, uh, or you know. Uh, on the screen, sharing it via WebEx is pretty painful. So if it's available, people can read it, people can go back and forth, and then I think our discussion would be more meaningful. So it's my task to update it and to put it on GitHub between now and next time. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions to, to Kiriti on this uh, item? Okay. Uh, uh, we'll move to this uh, next item, which is, uh, required us to revisit it last time. Uh, there was an ask to schedule a meeting with the DETNET working group. 
uh, to discuss again the uh, the, the MIAD uh, and uh, the existence of the death net control word uh, and any possible OEM. I think we'll go we're circling back to this uh, to this point. Are we ready to have that meeting with the death net uh, working group or chairs? Mm, or can uh, we defer that? I simply don't know. I don't know where I am just now. Uh, in Stockholm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a wild guess there. But um, no, I, I, I just want to update the action item. Uh, are we com are we comfortable to schedule? No, I, I think we need to defer this until we actually decide on uh, what we discuss next week. Agree. Okay. Um, just submit this. Oh, okay. Garbled. Um, the next item on the agenda is a re update to the status report. I don't have a significant update to uh, report since last week. Uh, I'm still shooting for a first draft revision before before IETF one twelve. Um, that's my update on this status report. Um, any questions for me? Okay. Uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is the update on the requirements spec. Uh, Matthew, I know that there is a link there. So you want to talk uh, about it? Okay. So the, yeah, so we, I created a wiki, um, a wiki page for the requirements, um, and um, there is also we also just uploaded a first stab at a, a, a draft um, uh, with help from Stuart um, to start documenting some of the the ADI requirements, uh, ancillary data indicator requirements. Um, it's only was only posted about two hours ago two or three hours ago so um anyway that link is to the draft so any feedback on the the draft uh, would be would be great um so basically the draft just if you click on that it'll take you to the draft um yeah uh so at the moment it's just a set of um sort of some background and some general high level High level um, requirements to steer the protocol design work. Okay. Um, I have a question to you, Matthew. How would you like to collect uh, feedback? Um, I mail mail on, the, mail on the list, ma mail to me or Stuart, or and also, I mean, possibly it, it might be worth. I'm wondering if we can use the wiki somehow to um, for comments from you know during these meetings. We can maybe put some notes on the wiki, uh, and then I can transfer them into the draft. So okay. Uh, I also have a option of putting this up on GitHub so that people can comment, like a uh, give review it in line. Sure. Uh, yeah. If you yeah, would like. That. Yes. I'll, yeah. I can help. With no problem. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you want to add on this? And anyone else wants to ask about this? Uh, I, just, I just made a note uh, when I saw the uh, wiki page coming up, and uh, it's at that time it looked like it was use case only. And what I'm saying is that I think there are a number of requirements 
uh, fairly low number of requirements uh, that uh, we can't uh, actually find out from the use cases. It, it's more uh, it's more of a general kind. It's a uh, uh, things like keeping uh, the MPLS uh, architecture viable for the future. I don't think we can get that out of the um, the use cases. I haven't looked at what uh, Matthew talked about as uh, general requirements in the current draft. I will do that. It's possible that it's covered. Yeah, we have we have tried to take on board some of that. Um, obviously, you know, it's not just extracting requirements specifically from the use cases. It's also setting some general principles. Um, for example, uh, the one that you've written on the on the wiki page. There. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think the right thing to do is to request that people read it and then just come yeah. back and discuss it. Yeah, and I have to apologise. I just looked at it and I can't spell ancillary, so um, <laughs> I will fix that in the next version. You can you can use helpful. <laughs> I'm sure that Matthew will spell ancillary right. No, I, 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 I didn't go through and correct it in all the places. I, I, I have too many. Don't ideas. worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Um, thank you, Matthew, and I'll move on. Um, uh, the next item we have on the agenda is a proposal from John. Uh, let me put it up on the screen. And I'll give him a chance to talk about it. Um, hoping you're still there. You are silent and. Well, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, John. Okay, uh, I don't think I'll read it, but have have people actually looked at it? Yes, I have reviewed. Yeah. You know, because what I'm wondering about is maybe I should just answer questions that people have questions about. I, I think, John, it's it's best that, um, you know, um, although people might have read it, um, okay. I can you know, go talk about it. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, to give it, you know, yeah, a fair okay. uh, chance to. All right. Well, anyway, what it's trying to do is um, complete and extend uh, the FAI work. Uh, it's basically just to try and clean it up. Um, and because a lot of, I sent an email to Loa yesterday, uh, sort of enumerating uh, the network, the functions that we've been talking about that have been proposed over the last six months or so. And some of them are related to forwarding, others are not really related to forwarding. So I was using the term network function rather than forwarding action. Um, the, the, Key point, I think, is really in the se second paragraph, which is when we're defining a function, we're basically going to define it via an RFC. We're going to define what the function is, uh, whether it needs ancillary data, if it needs ancillary data, what that ancillary data looks like, and we're going to describe whether it's in stack or after stack, and we're going to assign it uh, a particular bit in the bit vector, which is carried in the whatever it's called, the uh, network function label stack block. So that, uh, which is then getting into the third paragraph, which is that we have a special, we have two special purpose labels, one for end to end, the other for hop by hop. And this was a suggestion from Stuart and Adrian that uh, it allows the end to end functions and the hop by hop functions to evolve separately. And it allows the P routers to only look at the stuff that they care about. Uh, they don't have to worry about the end to end stuff at all. And so then we'll have a special purpose label for end to end and one for hop by hop. That's followed by a, and we're not, we're going to leave the uh, fields that are not special purpose label as they are today, because we really don't want to, uh, we don't really need to do anything with them. Uh, so then following that, is a set of one or more uh, 30 bit fields, which are basically the bit vectors, which are defined as we 
the bit vectors need to be defined contiguously. And so when we define a new function, we'll just take the next available bit in the bit vector. And um, so then there's a set of uh, one or more 30 bit, bit vectors, which are basically just contiguous. And then that's followed by label stack entries, which uh, carry the label stack, the ancillary data for that is to be carried in the uh, in the label stack as opposed to post stack. So then when a P router gets a packet, it will identify that it's a hop by hop function. It will look at the bit vectors and understand which ones are set in the packet. And uh, basically then that will give it a map for, and the ancillary data both in the label stack and post label stack is set in the same order as the bit vectors. So depending upon which bits are set, you know exactly how the ancillary data in the label stack looks and which piece is for which of the specified functions and the same with the uh, after stack data. Um, and uh, I think that that's about it. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, John. Oh, I... uh, there, there's, there's one other thing, which is the, uh, looking at uh, incremental deployment, uh, what we're saying is that at any point in time, a given P router will only understand a particular set of network functions. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't have to support all of them, but he understands all of the network functions up to a certain point in the bit vector. And so it will process the packet up to the point at which he understands. And at that point, he considers the rest of the data to be opaque and just skips it. So that, that we can incrementally add network functions and the P routers that don't understand it will just ignore it. Any questions to John? I, I have a comment, not, not the question. Uh, I think the proposal of having two special purpose labels, one for hop by hop, one for end to end is an interesting uh, proposal. Um, it at least uh, reduces the function uh, or action um, vector or registry uh, by half uh, the size of it. Uh, it, it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one value. And mm, I'm not sure what is the feedback, but, but I should mention that indeed uh, lots of what you're proposing is what the design team has been looking into. So it has... Okay, I mean, this is what, what, what actually happened was I had been putting bits and pieces of this out in comments to the mailing list. And I just thought rather than continuing to put it out piecemeal, I wanted to just consolidate everything into one place so that we could see what it looked like. My, my, yeah, uh, yeah. I, have, I have some comments. Uh, my understanding is that you actually try to um, put a Catalog of uh, uh, headers after uh, for the post stack uh, post stack data in the uh, label stack, but uh, as I have uh, uh, talked uh, what what? last time, I, I actually you know this kind of catalog is uh, has very little or no help to the uh, to the actual chip uh, forwarding uh, performance. Um, the the reason is uh, follows because. Uh, uh, in the modern uh, forwarding chips, it all, always pass all the headers first. And once they see this header, they already know uh, its type. So there's no use to uh, just give a catalog uh, somewhere uh, uh, in the packet to tell what you have, because you will need to pass the header. Anyway, then uh, when, when you get the headers, you already know what you have or what you haven't. So that's why um, we, we should really try understand. not to uh, add an indicator to tell, okay, what functions we have uh, after uh, this, the label stack. That that's, uh, doesn't help. Well, we need, 
we need to understand the structure of the ancillary data in the label stack itself. For yeah. the uh, for the <laughs> post stack data, uh, we know, but the, I, the 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 post post stack data is is going to be self identifying. Yes. How, yeah. However, if you do put it in the order that that's in the bit vectors, <laughs> then you may get a performance boost. No. Because what? Well, let me finish. That's, that's, that, that's a, that answer is no, because uh, the only requirement uh, I think is you, we should you, always are put. Are you interrupting uh, me? Are you okay. interrupting me? Okay, go ahead. L let's let's give a chance for you to jump the finish and then go ahead. Yeah, no, the 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 post stack data. Uh, the, the 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 only reason really to put it in the order that it's in in the network functions uh, bit vectors is that you may get a performance increase because you're doing prefetching. In other words, you're going to pull in the data for network function n post stack data for network function n and as part of that memory fetch you may bring in the uh, post stack data for n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 so john just to check if i understand wait how you i have a question for clarification are you saying that we need to put uh, flags in the flag fields for uh, Every post stack data we actually uh, put after the stack. Yes. In other words, when you're defining a network function, it's going to be defined in an uh, in an RFC. We're going to define what the function is. We're going to define whether it needs ancillary data. If it needs ancillary data, what does the data look like? And is the data carried in the stack or after the stack? And then what we're saying is that. You use the bit, you basically are going to set in a in a particular packet, you're going to set certain network function bits in the uh, in the network function flags fields. And then the ancillary data, both in the stack and post stack, is in the same order as the, the bit flags are set. So, okay. that, so that does that mean that the, if you have the first flag is I actually have two different SPLs also. That, 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 that's exactly uh, what I mean. So this kind of catalog is useless because the only information we need is uh, uh, that up to a point, if we still need to continue to, continue to parse a packet or not, if we have that kind of information, that's enough. That's why we do need a indicator no, well, actually, to tell what follows uh, the label stack. If there's something follows, we need to continue to uh, parse a packet. So that's yeah, and that's, that information that's is enough. We don't need to know what actually we have because we need to parse that header anyway. After we pass a header, we know what we have because every rolling chip will do the parsing first, then do the processing next. So after uh, parsing, we we know what we have and what need we need to process. Then in the second step, we do the uh, corresponding processing. So you, you okay, can that's, see that's, the catalog a, has no use to boost the performance. Well, actually, the way it works is that the individual network function bits tell you whether you have post stack data or not. In other words, we don't have a separate field which says there's post stack data. It's implicit okay. in the definition of the network function. We have a label, right? We have I, a special I, label or a bit. How are you no, and, no, uh, and John? I have a clarification. Uh, uh, is when you say why you you parse the post stack data? Is there an assumption that it's a TLV, like there is a type there inside the p in, in the, inside the data? So when you no, parse, we we, we we already. If you look at our uh, extension header proposal, we we just have a header chains like the. Uh, um, IPv6 well, I, I, extension I, I, header. So we just do the parsing the follow this uh, header chain, then we get all the header we need. So right? my point is why you is, is if the type is already in the flag that John is talking about. So that tells you that the first uh, length value, there's no type length value in the PSD, there's only length value, and the type is from the flag. So uh, you get the type and the order of the LVs from the flags. 
Uh, maybe that's what he's hint to, hinting to. I, there is no redundancy, basically. The type is not present in the PSD. Well, no, actually, um, well, then, what you, can, I, can I answer? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what Tarek said is true. However, I was assuming that the, uh, the, the postdoc data was also self-identifying. That's in the uh, second or third from the bat back uh, bottom of the uh, write up before it says if, if NFF3 and or NFF6 were set, then it knows to look for bottom of stack data. The, the paragraph after that. Oh, here, okay. It, begin, it begins if NFF and NFF6 were set, then it knows that there's bottom of stack data. And if NFF three was set, then if only three was set, then the first piece of data is going to be for three. And it will say this is for three, just for uh, sanity checking. So John, there is an argument that if uh, if there is a type length value, then it becomes redundant to have, you know, you know, if I'm parsing all of the, this after the stack, then why am I? Yeah, I, I understand. The only the only reason to do this was for consistency with what we have to do in the label stack. In the label stack, we need to know what the uh, ancillary data looks like so we that we can... We don't need, so, that's the point. We don't need to know that because that's redundant. I'm talking about in the stack. Yeah. In the stack, we have to know what the, uh, Why? the block looks like. Why? Because otherwise, you don't have any way to interpret what the individual label stack entries mean. Why? Uh, because that's uh, exactly how parse parser works. If I parser, know in the stack, I know, okay, I need to continue to examine the data after the label stack. Then I will I'm continue not talking to about, follow that. Yep. I'm not talking about after the stack. What I'm saying is that we need to understand how the ancillary data is structured within the label stack. And all I was saying was there's no reason to do it differently for post stack. There may be some performance improvements that be had by even, being able to pull so, the data so in. Same thing. Even in the in the label stack, we need to, unless some some uh, uh, label we we will define uh, as a function, it's just a normal label. If it's a special label, we also know what it is. So that no, that's really depends no, on don't. how we will go forward. If if all the in stack data will be special labels, we will know uh, after we scan the label stack, we will know what they are. We don't need we don't need the catalog for that either. There's there's I one know. special purpose label for many 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 network functions. I, I agree with John here. Uh, you this is what the design team has been. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you want to use a single label to indicate the functions, all the all the function, I mean all the function already be embedded in this single label, then okay, that basically that bit is a is a tell you what the function is. But I mean, if you have some other uh, special labels uh, as functions, follow this um, you know this 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 one. Then we don't need to tell it in the in that in, in that. And the, the, the whole the whole point is that we don't want to have a special purpose label for every separate network function. We want to put. That, place that, that, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. What's, that's what's that's there. that's just for that special aggregation uh, label. That's fine. But I mean, for other label follows, you don't need to tell tell there are such kind of labels somewhere before it. Right. And, and so what I said was, we need to be able to understand how the ancillary data is encoded within the label stack block. There is no reason to encode it in a different order in the post stack data. That's the only statement I'm making. So, John, if you have two special purpose labels with two different flag fields, one for end to end and one for hop by hop, uh, you will have two sets of uh, 
bottom is stack data. So you have one set after the first uh, special purpose labels and another one after the uh, the second, and they can each be end to end or uh, no, sorry, they can each be in stack data or post stack data. Correct. And what I said was, we want the hop by hop network functions to precede the end to end functions within the label stack, so that the P router just looks at the first thing. It uh, it sees, and that's all it needs to do. For the uh, post stack data, or, or whatever we want to call it, <clears throat> the ancillary data for the hop by hop functions is first. The ancillary data for the end to end functions is after, for the same reason. And this, yeah, that's not the most <clears throat> because the, the um... For the in-stack data, they are uh, just following the uh, uh, SPL. Yes. In other words, in in the, the the format of the label stack block is a special purpose label, a set of one or more uh, bit vector <coughs> uh, fields, and then the ancillary data for each function that requires for each function whose bit is set in the bit vector, which requires ancillary data. And the order in the stack is the same order as the bits are set in the bit vectors. And that's also true for the PSD. I, I would, I'm saying you, you might as well. There's no reason to just, you know, make it arbitrary. And the, the other thing I, I did note, there may be a performance advantage to having it in order because as you're doing the memory fetches, you can be effectively doing prefetching. You're saying, I know the first four of potential six, so I only need to look at the four. Right. If you look at in the real hardware, there's no concept of a fetching or prefetching. It's just a have a Packet uh, header uh, buffer uh, in range. Then you just do the parsing can you state, first. Can you state definitively that every piece of hardware that's been developed and will be developed always parses the stuff first? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, uh, addressing the all the may may uh, flow. Um, you know, uh, may stream uh, chips available today. Are you? Um, this is factually not correct. In fact, and if uh, OpenFlow is not the only forwarding paradigm in deployment. No, saying OpenFlow, I'm uh, telling already telling the main, uh, mainstream chips from both Broadcom and uh, you know Intel. You no, know, they, they, they... uh, there are far more software-based forwarders, and uh, if you look into the forecast of how the industry will develop, same, will same, more. same thing. I also understand all the ma ma major uh, network processors. They, those That's are. Fine. So, uh, software. If, yeah. if we are talking about anything general programming, they all rely on prefetching. If you want any performance, prefetch is mandatory. You know, they they have the packet buffer uh, to either it's a, you know a few hundred bytes maybe or or just some slightly more than a hundred bytes. You can work on those those bytes. It's already in the buffer. You can do anything about it. If you request more than that, then you need to fetch more more. Then that that will reduce the performance. But that's what we call the uh, header buffer. So that's a critical uh, design. Uh, 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 requirements we, we need to, uh, that's why we need to reduce the header overhead, but uh, not, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, uh, the header design with, uh, you know, the, uh, some, uh, this kind of, uh, catalog, yeah, doesn't help because this uh, doesn't I help you reduce the header overhead. I think what I would like to recommend Loa is that at the point that we actually have a proposal for doing this stuff that we actually uh, validate it with as many different uh, hardware specialists as we can find. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, we I don't think that, that we... my my experience is that uh, doing that from an ITF platform is hard. No, no. Well, what we can do is we can just, as part of the process, we should make sure that the vendors who are on the design team verify with their hardware associates that they that the hardware associates think this thing is the proposal is doable. Yeah. Okay. That's probably doable. You know, because I I think that the the more input we get on the hardware ramifications of any proposal, the uh, the better off we'll be. Tarek, did you capture this? Let me do that. That's a, that's a good point, actually, John. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, like I said, Tarek, I. I've been putting pieces of this out over time. And so I'll, all I really wanted to do was get everything down in one place. So if I understand you correctly, the major difference is that you actually have two different flag fields and two different SPLs. Uh, you have two sets of uh, PSD, and then you have uh, uh, Instax data just following the SPL. Uh, the thing with uh, the Phi proposal is that there is only one bit uh, pointing to that there is a PSD, and then uh, we haven't uh, decided on the order, but uh, we could do that. Well, actually, Lo, what I the, the point I was making is that you don't need an explicit bit to say there's bottom of the stack data, because associated with the definition of any network function is where its ancillary data, if needed, is to are indicating bottom of stack if any of the network function bits are set which require uh, bottom of stack data. So you don't need a bit to say there's bottom of stack data. Of the I actually, kind of hi, John. Uh, yeah. I have a question here. Uh, you're talking about uh, the hub and hop and uh, the end to end functions uh, with the data in the label stack. Then, how about the functions which require data to be in the post uh, stack? I thought that, yeah, I mean, what happens is that for every network function bit, we describe whether it needs ancillary data, what the ancillary data looks like, and where the ancillary data is to be placed, either in the stack or after the stack. Yes, and uh, I noticed this uh, sentence that uh, uh, mentions that if a given network function is directly related to forwarding and requires ancillary data, and data should be placed in RSEs. That's I mean, I, I it's not strictly necessary. I mean, you can do it either way, but the if you're doing a forwarding function, it's probably best to have the ancillary data where you can get your hands on it quickly. Yeah, but uh, it's not. I understand you, that. You know, you could, you could have an end-to-end -end function that has ancillary data, or I'm sorry, a non-forwarding function which has ancillary data in a stack, and you could have a network function that's doing related to forwarding whose ancillary data is bottom of stack. It's just that, generally speaking, if it's related to forwarding, you want it to be close at hand. Yeah, so you mean that it is preferred to be close to the top of the header, right? Yes. Yeah. But um, maybe there's some limitation about the space in the label stack entry, like if you have one. Sure. To and there's nothing, I mean, you, what, what we're going to do when we define a particular network function, we're going to define where we want the data to be. 
Yeah. The the other thing is that in a given packet, you know, even if we defined um, sixty two, we have two um, two label stack entries of bit vectors. So we've defined whatever it is, sixty two different network functions. In any given packet, there's probably only going to be one or two or maybe three network functions that are required. Um, what I mean is if you have the some data which is uh, exceed the size of a label stack entry, maybe a would be more uh, flexible or uh, uh, ap can... apologies, I need to drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually close the, the end we, of we are the... close to closing the meeting also. Uh, yeah. Okay, I, I think the the I answer think data, we... data, Yeah, I was just gonna answer that one question, Law. The ancillary data for a given network function can take one or more label stack entries. Yeah, I understand. And there's a still the bottom stack bit in inside that. Yeah, and like I said, the can you know be a continuous field to carry some uh, data in the stack if it is uh, larger than one. Uh, yeah, you'd size. have two. You'd have two label stack entries. You could even split a label stack entry among multiple network functions if you wanted. If the if the ancillary data was not large. Yeah, that is a possible approach. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it, we can discuss. This is this discuss is really just things. a this is really just a framework for defining network functions. Okay. Thanks. You know, it, it doesn't define any network functions. It just says when we define the network functions, this is how we want to encode the information about them. Yeah, I understand. Just to yeah. want to make sure that it covers both case label stack in label stack and the post label stack. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, it's explicit in the definition of the individual network function. Um, okay. John and uh, and Jimmy, I have to stop the recording. Uh, that's that's fine. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay.